I have made a new thing. If you go to thedailybin.com, you will find this new website. I guess you could say it's a newspaper that I made just for me. But what you're looking at here are effectively summaries of discussions on Hacker News formatted in a way for me such that it's easy to read and glance over. I'm generating a few articles, so when you scroll down, you can see that I've got a few extra down below as well. And my goal is to have 10 articles a day that I'm able to glance at. That's plenty of content for my morning diet, I think. But the thing that really feels empowering and really cool is that this is a list that I'm maintaining myself. The algorithm that generates this is something that I control. It's also a serverless setup. I'm doing everything here with a Git scraper that I'm gonna explain in just a bit. But the main thing that I hope to emphasize at this particular point is that even though you can go to thedailybin.com and enjoy the content that I'm trying to enjoy as well, you can also try to make this yourself. And I think that's actually the most interesting thing that you could do with the knowledge in this video. After all, there really is too much content on the internet these days. And maybe being able to be in control of your own little content filter can actually be a nice thing. So the goal of this video is to explain how I made this and I'll do that in a bit. After which I also hope to show this one article that I just found by coincidence that if I would have not made this app for myself, there's a good chance that I would have missed out on this one a pretty joyful inkling of knowledge. But before getting there, let's just talk about how this is made. Now the data pipeline here is really simple. There is a Hacker News endpoint that's maintained by Algolia. And what you can do is you can do a GET request and get, I think, the 50 most popular articles of the day. I could be wrong on that number, but you get a bunch. And effectively, that's a JSON blob that you can do whatever with. With those article IDs, you can actually get the entire conversation that's part of the Hacker News thread. So what I've done is I've basically built this one Marimo notebook that has a couple of prompts, LLM things, and some tricks that in the end give me structured information that contains summaries of the discussions that were happening on Hacker News. That is then something that I can pass on to a template. I'm using a Jinja for that, by the way. It's a nice one in Python. After which I am storing everything on disk before committing that in Git. And you can do all of this from GitHub Actions. And the thing that's really interesting here is that this setup is kind of well known as a pattern popularized by Simon Willison. You could look at this and say, this is a Git scraper. With the one little difference that usually when you make a Git scraper, the point is to get all the data inside of your repository. In this particular case, because I'm saving it to Git and also on my repository itself, there's actually this automated job on Netlify. It's a vendor, but they make it really simple to just host a static website out there. And it's really just a static website, so I don't need anything more fancy. So Netlify felt like a good choice. But this Git scraper, every time it updates, it redeploys the rendered files to Netlify. So this whole setup is completely serverless. The only thing that you really gotta do is come up with this one script that can turn some source of articles into some interesting summary that you're interested in. And again, what I'm doing here is I'm not summarizing the original article that Hacker News might be referring to. What I'm doing here is I'm summarizing the discussion instead. So just to explain my LLM setup, I'm doing this one get request and that is giving me 50 discussions. Now, if I were to take each one of those discussions and turn it into an article, that would be way too much stuff for me to read. So instead, I wanna reduce that down a bit. And this is where the first LLM comes in. So this is the filter LLM. And the whole point here is to reduce this down to uh, 10 discussions that seem the most interesting. I've been trying out a couple of vendors and I've been trying out a couple of prompts. So this is something that's definitely changing over time. But the one thing I will say is that it really helps to say not so much what I'm interested in, but rather what I'm not interested in. So for example, I'm not interested in hearing about who's hiring on the Hacker News forum. Uh, that's great, but it's not something I wanna read in my newspaper. Uh, similarly, as much as I like reading about failures in security land, I'm also not the biggest security expert. So whenever there's just in-depth knowledge needed to really appreciate what's happening, uh, that's also a good reason for me to skip. So uh, that filter relies a lot on what I don't wanna see. And I give a couple of hints of what I do wanna see, and that's how I end up with these uh, 10 discussions over here. So having 10 discussions is great, but then the next step, of course, is to, again, use an LLM. But this time I'm going to make a summary. I'm going to take the entire discussion, so that big thread, the whole nested thing, I'm gonna flatten it into a single text and that's going to be part of a prompt and I'm just gonna tell the LLM, summarize this, but please do so in the style of the New York Times. This gives me 10 articles, but it also gives me 10 titles. And those titles are actually kind of important too, because, and this is mainly for aesthetic reasons, I also care about having some sort of a visual. Something about that makes it just feel more alive to me. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm not going to get the entire article and give that to some sort of image generating tool. That's just too long of a prompt. But instead, I'm going to take a two-step approach here. So those titles, they're going to go through one LLM that's going to try and grab a visual phrase. It's going to look at the title of the article, and it's going to try to see if it can come up with some sort of phrase that could be used by some sort of image generator. The benefit with phrases, especially if they're like a nice little noun chunk, is that they tend to visualize a lot nicer. You can just say, hey, I want a picture of thing in the style of thing with extra setting blah. Doing that with a full sentence is a little bit harder to steer. So getting it out as a phrase is definitely nice because in the end, that is going to give me 10 prompts for uh, visual purposes. And, and hopefully at this point, you can recognize that by the time I'm here, I effectively have enough for me to generate some sort of a front page. Every article has a title, every article has a prompt. I can also sort these articles. But this is everything that I need to make some pretty Jinja templates render. So for a given date, let's say it's 2025, there's a folder for the month, maybe also one for the day. I'm going to generate an index.html file. I'm also going to generate lots of these other files for each separate article. And all of that is going to get committed to Git. I'm definitely misusing Git as a database in this particular case. But again, because it's all stateless, that's actually a nice compromise. I don't need to build a full custom CMS or anything like that. Just keeping this in Git for a personal project that I'd like to have out there quickly uh, definitely, definitely feels fine. When you look at all of this, hopefully you can imagine that all of this fits in a single notebook, but you can maybe also feel that it's a little bit hacky. And I think that's accurate, but I also think that that's exactly the point. There's an LLM with a prompt over here, another one over here, another one over here, and there's also this image model, right? So all these things together are kind of interacting with one another when I think about the final results. And I want to be able to tweak that. And because these things are so interrelated, I like to have this one environment where if I make a change here, I can see the visual output somewhere else. And a notebook is just simply the best environment to do that. But again, we're dealing with LLM stuff here. Odds are you're going to want to iterate on all of these phrases and prompts and models that you're using. So keeping it hacky in the beginning is totally fine. Now, I got to say, I'm actually really happy with this final result that I've got. It's not just the batch job and the fact that there are some articles in here that seem pretty relevant, actually. It's also that I really ended up using this on a daily basis to the extent that I actually uh, added a couple of these cute animations, like I want this to feel like a premium brand site, so to say. But the coolest thing that happened was that I actually found out about something that I think I would not have found out about otherwise. So there's this one article over here that I saw the other day. The title of the article is Reimagining Lens Design, How Machine Learning is Transforming Optical Engineering. And that seems pretty interesting. Like there's a little bit of machine learning maybe that's being combined with something from the physical realm. That is usually stuff that I'm interested in. So super duper cool. But at some point I thought that this was just uh, hallucinating a bit because apparently it's been claimed that there is a library called Torch Lens Maker. Turns out though, there actually is a library called Torch Lens Maker and the Hacker News post was about this announcement. And it also totally makes sense. In deep learning land, you've got this backprop that helps you train the neural network. And that backprop, turns out, is super duper useful when you're putting lenses next to each other. There's also this effect of backprop when you're designing the system. So this was an amazing article, not just because the summary here got me interested, but also, and I think this is key if you're going to do something like this yourself, I ended up adding these links at the bottom over here. So what I think is really fair on the internet, if you find some really interesting bit of knowledge and you make a derived work from that, that you do link back to the original source. So that's also what I'm doing at the bottom over here. Uh, I'm definitely linking back to the original Hacker News discussion, and I'm also definitely linking back to the original article so that people can actually read themselves. This, in the end, is just a summary. Hopefully it's enough for me to figure out if I want to read the big thing. But I think the experience would just be plain bad if you read this, if you're then super interested and aren't able to actually go to the sources after. So, so yeah, that's definitely something that um, I'm kind of principled about. If you're going to make a website like this, uh, that's great. But uh, definitely uh, add these links. These are important. Don't forget them. So there you have it. This is The Daily Bin. Technically, it's a newsletter that I'm mainly making for me. But if you have feedback, I do want to listen to it. Uh, there is also an RSS reader, and I think I want to add a newsletter at some point. It's just not done yet right now. But if you think this is interesting, definitely consider maybe building something like this for yourself. It's definitely an empowering feeling to just be in control of the filter of the internet yourself. I think in the future, what I might also do is not just use Hacker News, but maybe also add a couple of subreddits. I think that could be super useful. And I also think that maybe doing something with Archive could also make this page just a little bit better. But as is already, it's just kind of nice that I wake up in the morning, I can spend five minutes, and then I have the feeling, oh, 
I'm probably caught up with most of my news. That's great. I can now move on to other stuff that's important in my life. So yeah, The Daily Bin. Feel free to check it out.